Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, so welcome to the class. Uh, can you see my uh, presenting slides? Yeah, yes. that works fine. Okay, thank you. I uh, during the class, uh, you may uh, ask your questions uh, when you have a, a doubt or concern. And there are two ways. Uh, either you can use Slack. I uh, Muhammad Reza will be managing Slack. Uh, are you there, Muhammad Reza? Okay. Yes, yeah, I'm okay, here. Cool, thanks. And uh, if you have uh, some questions you want to raise your hand, you can uh, use a room feature to raise your hand and ask. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's start. Uh, today, we so we will cover the topics of uh, quality standards, a uh, quality plan, and uh, testing. So first, uh, let's review uh, what we, we learned from last lecture. Uh, so basically, from last lecture, th this this figure is what you want to remember. Uh, this is the uh, architecture for software quality assur assurance. So if you look at it, there are uh, several uh, components. Uh, the first part is uh, the pre-project SQA component. So basically before the project start and before uh, software quality assurance activities start, we need to make some plans. Uh, so in this part, so we involve some uh, like we involve contract review and uh, development and the quality plans. So in country review, we want to negotiate with our customers and uh, also review our proposals to make sure the contract uh, is correct and uh, it agree, agrees with uh, the, um, the, the proposal, okay? And also we do make a, a development plan to guide the development process and make a quality plan to get the uh, quality assurance activities. Okay, this is the first part. The second part is the actual um, software quality assurance activities. Um, for example, we, we need to do software testing. So we need to review inspections and also apply other software quality assurance activities in this stage. So this is the, the actual um, uh, process that we follow to uh, ensure the quality of software, software systems. Okay. I uh, so we we also need uh, some infrastructure support, such as uh, um, the the training support and also uh, the tooling support, right? And the process, procedure, and working instruction support. So this is a, a quality infrastructure components and. Another component is a quality management component. Um, so this is, this is to uh, so manage the, the project progress. So also to manage the, the quality of the system. Uh, so for example, to use a software quality metrics to measure the quality of the system. Okay, this is a, a quality management component. Um, also, there are some, the, another uh, set of components that are the standards. Uh, there are, many different standards to guide the software quality assurance, assurance activities. So uh, these quality standards are, uh, so they have two purposes. So one purpose is, is to, to specify what is required for, uh, for software quality assurance uh, certification. For example, for example if, it, if your company want to um, have a certification of quality, so you need to satisfy this requirements specified in this standards. Uh, another uh, uh, purpose is to specify the guidelines for how to conduct software quality assurance. So two purposes, standards. We will cover standards later. And uh, uh, the base of the, all the software quality assurance activities are the uh, human components. Uh, so we need a, uh, so we need a, different roles, such as the management roles, the SQA unit, which is the SQA team, or you can say the quality QA team. And also uh, these components include um, so the people outside the, outside the SQA team, uh, including those, for example, developers and uh, managers and also trustees who are interested in the SQA. Uh, uh, SQA process and activities. Okay, so uh, this is a review of what we covered from last class. Uh, so today, I 
So we will go through some of these components. Um, this is the agenda for today's, uh, uh, today's class. Okay, uh, first we will um, talk about the software quality plan. So then we will talk about software testing and then software quality standards. So here uh, you can see these references uh, for these different uh, parts. Okay. Uh, first, uh, let's look at a uh, quality plan. So, so this is where the quality plan sits in the SQA system. Okay, it, it's a pre-project SQA. So, so before we do anything, so we 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 better make a plan. So before we do quality assurance, let's make a quality plan. But how we? how to start, where do we start to make such a plan? So we should have some goals, have, have some objectives to start the plan, right? So actually in here, our quality goals or quality objectives are the quality requirements. Let's remember from last class, we discussed about those quality requirements. So, uh, specifically, uh, we talk about the Microcos model of software quality factors. So these factors are the quality requirements. Um, so in Microcos model, there are three dimensions. The first dimension is product transition. So it describes two. Uh, it describes the extent to which the software fulfills its specifications. So the second dimension is a uh, product operation. So it describes the ability of the software to, to be changed. Another dimension is product revision. Oh, sorry, I, I just talked about product revision is the ability to which uh, we can change the software. And about product transition is the adapt adaptability of the software to new environment. So these are the uh, quality factors and these are the um, quality requirements so we may consider for our software systems, okay? So these are the factors, and, uh, but these factors are very broad. So we want to go to more detail. So when we test or evaluate a software, software we want to go to detailed quality factors. So here we call sub-factors. And we, we also call factor as a criteria. Yeah. So uh, for example, for the uh, software quality factor of correctness, so we have the criteria of uh, accuracy. So accuracy, how accurate your software, software fulfill the requirements. And the completeness is completeness of the functionality of the specified, specified in, the, in the specifications and up to dateness. And, and for example, for reliability, we have sub criteria such as uh, uh, system application reliability, a uh, failure recovery. Uh, for example, failure recovery is uh, how soon you can recover from a failure. Okay. And uh, there are many, um, there are many sub factors for these um, quality factors. So you, so you can go to details. Uh, uh, so on the slides, post on Moodle. So I, I, I won't go to all of them, okay. Um, so there's one thing we want to remember. Uh, quantitative measures are preferred over qualitative measures. So what are qualitative measures? Or what are quantitative measures? measures? Uh, for example, uh, let's look at some, some quality goals or quality objectives for help desk systems or HDS. So the quality requirements include the HDS should be very reliable. The HDS should operate continuously. The HDS should be highly efficient and the HDS should be very responsible responsive to customers. 
So, so what's the problem here for this quali qual qualitative requirement? So think about it. So the, the problem is they are difficult to measure. How to measure the requirement of uh, the HDS should be very, very reliable. There's no way to measure it, right? So we prefer quantitative requirement. So these are the corresponding quantitative requirements. For example, uh, for the reliability uh, requirement, so the quantitative counterpart is HDF, HDS availability should exceed a 99.9%, .9%, which means the HDS downtime should not exceed five minutes per month. So that, that is a quantitative goal. This is easier to evaluate. And also, for example, uh, for the qualitative requirement of the HDS should operate continuously. The quantitative counterpart is in case of a HDS failure, the system's recovery time should not exceed 10 minutes in 99% of cases of failure. So that's easy to evaluate, right? So when we make quality plans, when we make quality goals, we use quantitative requirements. Okay. And after we make these goals, we have uh, some goals already. So how to um, in implement these goals? For, for example, for the goal of, uh, um, so for the, goal, for the first goal, uh, HDS availability should exceed 99%, right? How can we implement the goal? How, how can we evaluate whether a goal has been achieved? So when we have different uh, activities in a project life cycle SQA components, such as testing, right? So we can test the, the software, software to see whether um, the achieve the goal, whether it can hold for 99.9% .9 of the cases of the time, sorry. So we talk about quality goals and how to implement the quality goals. What is a quality plan? So the quality plan is actually a list of goals and how you plan to evaluate or implement these goals. So what are the elements of the quality plan? So first is a list of quality goals or objectives. So the goals are also the acceptance criteria for the customer. So we want to also we want to map our goals to measurable metrics. So in the quality plan, first, so we have quality goals. And these goals can be mapped to our factor, our quality factor or quality criteria, and sub factor or sub criteria. For example, um, for the quality goal of uh, availability at least 99.5%, this is a quality goal. So what's a quality factor? Quality factor is reliability. And a sub factor is availability, right? And we want to define a metric to evaluate the goal. The metric will be average downtime per week. Uh, next example for, uh, let's look at the last example. Uh, the cortical is a maximum response time, a 300 uh, millisecond in 99% of, of the requests. So what's the quality factor? The quality factor is uh, efficiency. The sub factor is uh, uh, the time efficiency. So what is the metric? The metric is response time. So when you make your quality plans, so you should you need to define the quality, what is a quality factor, what is a fast sub factor, what is a specific quality goal, and what is the metric to evaluate the goal. Okay. That is a list of quality goals and objectives.
So this is the most important thing in a quality plan, okay? A second part is a, a planned uh, review activities. So how you plan to, uh, how you plan the re review activities to evaluate the quality, quality goals. Uh, you need to, for example, you need to uh, make a schedule for the reviews and uh, to make sure you know who is responsible for reviews. So next is plan the software tests. What kind of tests you need to evaluate the goals. Uh, for example, you need a, a unit test, maybe integration test, system test, and you know how to schedule the test and who is responsible for the test. And also if there's a external so software, software, so you want to uh, accept a test to evaluate whether the external components can be accepted. And last part, so you want to make a plan for configuration management. So we will talk about uh, configuration management later. So basically, it's an infrastructure to, to manage the, the software changes. Okay. So in, the, in today, there's an assignment. In this assignment, you need to make a quality plan. So, so what is important? You don't have to fulfill uh, so all the elements. So what you need to do is uh, the most important thing is to make the quality goals and uh, also to map the quality goals to factor, sub-factor, and also define your metrics. And also you define how to evaluate the goals either by review or testing or other activities, okay? All right, so next part we want to talk about testing. So testing I, I is it's arguably the most important uh, uh, software quality assurance activity. So most of resources are spent on testing for SQA. So this is where as, uh, software testing is uh, sitting in the SQA system, okay? So first, uh, uh, let's look at uh, what is testing? What is software testing? Uh, before we define software testing, let's look at a, a, a very small example. So this is a simple adder program. Uh, basically, so this adder program allows you to add two comp two numbers within uh, minus 100 to 100. And uh, the user would, would enter these two numbers and the, the adder program would output the result. For example, first I input two, then I input three, the program would output five. So this is a simple program. So how, how can we test this program? So we need to run it. We actually, we need to run this program. We have to enter different numbers. Here we enter two and three, it, it out, outputs five. So, so we may use other inputs, like we, we can try 99 plus 99 as another input to test the program. So we can test different inputs and to check whether the output results is uh, expected, okay. And uh, also we want to test some invalid inputs. For example, we, instead of inputting the numbers, we want to input the letters. So what is the result after we input the letters? So whether the program would crash or it will display an error message. So yeah, we will also want to test invalid inputs. So this is a, just a brief example of uh, software testing. Uh, let's define software testing according to IEEE standard. So software testing is an activity in which a system or component is executed under specified conditions. The results are observed or recorded and the evaluation is made of some aspect of system or component. So software testing the target of software testing is either a system or a component. And the, the software is executed under specific conditions. So we run this, this software under specific conditions. Okay. 
So what is it? What are the goals of testing? I uh, so typically there are two goals. The first goal is to to demonstrate that the software meets its requirements. So we want to build a confidence that the software is working as expected. The second goal is to to discover situations in which the behavior of this software is incorrect, undesirable, or doesn't conform to its specification. So this is to identify incorrect behavior. After we identify incorrect behavior, so we want to make it right, we want to fix it. All right. So the first, uh, to ident so identify correct behavior is also called validation testing. So we want to validate the correct behaviors. Uh, for incorrect behaviors, uh, the testing is also called defect testing. We want to find as many defects as possible. Okay, these are the two goals of software testing. Uh, but there's some fact about testing that is uh, ugly. Uh, for example, Dr. Uh, uh, DeCastro claimed that software testing can be a very effective way to show the presence of bugs, but it is hope hopelessly inadequate for showing their absence. So software testing can tell us what's wrong, but it cannot tell us it is right. So that is the ugly truth about software testing. Why? Let's see a small example. I, you may see there is a, there's a method called test me displayed on the screen. Int test me, and it has two integer parameters, x and y. So how many tests do we need to exhaustively test such a small program? We don't care about the inside of the method. We just can talk about the parameters. How many tests do we need? We can test, we can uh, assign x to 10. We can assign 10 to x and uh, 20 to y. Now we can assign many different combinations like uh, one and two, three and five. If we want to test all the cases, that is impossible, right? So in this case, two integers, we can still do it, but it's uh, impractical. Imagine we want to test the Java compiler. Exhaust, exhaustive testing implies that you would need to try all possible Java programs. How many Java programs are there? We don't even know. So this is impossible even. So the first uh, challenge of software testing is a large input state spaces. Too many poss possible inputs, too many possible states that we cannot exhaustively test software, software system. Okay. Um, Uh, let's do another e exercise. This, in this program, how many paths do you think there are? Actually, I, for each n value, there are two possible paths, right? If there are, if n is from zero to one, then there are four possible paths, right? Two times two. And if n is two, there are, if n is two, there are four possible paths. If n is three, eight, If each test takes only uh, 0 0.001 seconds, of one millisecond, if each test takes one millisecond, with n equals to 36, so we need more time than 
the time that has passed since the Big Bang. So exhausting testing is impossible. There are too, too many possible pathways. Okay. Another challenge of uh, software testing is a lack of uh, continuity. Let's imagine if we want to test a bridge. If we find that a bridge can sustain a certain weight, uh, w, uh, W1, then it can also sustain the weight that is uh, smaller than W1, right? For example, if we, sh if we are sure that this bridge can handle um, like 100 tons of, uh, of weight, then we are sure that it can also handle like 10 tons of weight, right? But it's not true for testing software. Uh, for example, if the software, if you specify 100 as an input to the so software, uh, it is working correctly, but you cannot ensure that if you input 10, it's still in working correctly. Small differences in operating conditions can significantly impact software behavior. So these challenges are a lack of a continuity. So testing software is challenging. And we cannot avoid all the bugs because we, we are not possible to test everything. However, do we need to run tests Yes, even though testing is incomplete, so testing can increase our confidence that software has its desired behavior. So we need to achieve a balance between the cost of testing and the risk of missing bugs, okay? So we talk about what is software testing and uh, so why software testing is challenging. And how to test a software system? Before we talk about test a software system, let's, let's think about how we test a, a car. How can we test a car, right? Maybe first we want to test individual components of the car. If we want to test, uh, for example, we want first to test the doors, we test the tire, the wheel, the seats, we test them separately, right? Then we combine those uh, components into larger modules. For example, we, we test the whole platform, right? We test the whole uh, control system of the car. So this is about testing modules. Each module is a combination of different smaller components. Okay. So after we test this different modules, so we want to test the whole car, especially we want to take this car to the field, have a test drive. So we test the complete car. Okay. So, so we talk about uh, three levels of uh, testing for a car, right? How about Software, software testing. So we also have three levels. First level is unit testing. So we want to test individual units. We want to test these units in isolation without dependence on other units, okay? A, a unit can be a class, a function. So this test would uh, determine whether each unit functions as designed, okay? So after that, we want to run uh, integration testing. So we want to test a group of related units. We want to test these units together. So we want to, especially this part, so we want to find out whether these um, different units interact correctly. Okay. And last, we have system testing. So we want to test the complete software system. This is to evaluate the system's compliance with the specified requirements, such as uh, reliability, performance, efficiency, right? 
yeah, we talk about three levels of testing, unit testing, integration testing, and system testing. But there are more types of testing, especially this different types of testing uh, usually uh, uh, conduct at different stages. So we talk about unit testing, we talk about integration testing, system testing, and also there's a acceptance testing. So after system testing, so we want to, so the customer want to, uh, we want to test whether a customer can accept the system that is accepting acceptance testing. So which usually includes alpha testing and beta testing. There are other tests as well. So here we'll let's, let's look at uh, so how this testing are uh, distributed at different stages. So first we run unit tests, test individual components. Then we run integration tests. We, we test uh, the related uh, units together. Then we do, we do uh, system tests. First we do system functional tests. We test the functionality of, this, of the system. So the functionalities are the, for example, uh, are the correctness a factor in a macOS um, model. Right? Then we want to run performance testing. We, we want to test whether the software has a faster speed. And uh, acceptance, acceptance testing, and after acceptance testing, so we want to install this, the software in the customer environment and run a installation test. There can be other tests and you, so we can uh, skip some steps. For example, sometimes we may not need an installation test. Okay. So let's look at some details of this testing. Okay. Uh, first, unit testing. The target is a particular program unit, like a class. So focus on testing the functionality of an object or method in isolation. So we do unit testing because we want to maximum, maximize our test coverage. We want to test all the code. We want to test as much as possible. Uh, so unit testing usually includes three parts. The setup part, uh, so we want to set up the, we want to prepare the system for execute the test case. So we want to, you want to test a unit, but how you can run, how can you run the unit? Right? So we want to prepare an environment for running the unit. The second part is, is a, a call part. Uh, we want to call the method on the test, under test so that we can test the method. Right? And the, the next one is the assertion part. Uh, so we want to check the return results of the uh, method. So we want to check whether the result is expected. This is what the assertion part does. Okay, let's look at a, a detailed uh, Example, uh, we may have a children part sometimes. Okay. Uh, this, in this example, this is a unit test. So here, uh, first uh, we, we, we want to test uh, the method uh, uh, concatenate in the class main unit. Okay, the first step is to set up the test. So we, we define class main unit, and then we, we get actually call the testing method. And then we, we do assertion we evaluate whether re return value in the result is equals to one, two. One, two is our expected result, okay? This is a unit testing. And how about integration testing? So sometimes you, so sometimes you already test your units, but uh, if they, this units combine together, they may not work correctly. There are many, several possible uh, causes of uh, such, uh, of why integration testing can fail even though unit tests pass. Okay, first one is a uh, bad use of interfaces. Okay, so the second one is uh, a wrong hypothesis about the behavior of another unit. You know, also it can be a use of poor driver stops. So we'll talk about what is driver, what is stop later. Okay, but let's look at uh, uh, a visual example, right? Uh, so here we, we already test the two doors separately. So that's working fine. I, but so when we test them together, 
we will test these two doors together. And we will run an integration test and actually we find they cannot work together. So that's, that is why we need a integration testing, okay. And uh, about system testing. So we test this, the whole system as a, as a whole. Sorry. And uh, so we, we compare the test results with, with the requirement specifications. And usually performed by the development team or a independent testing team. Uh, what about acceptance testing? So the software is compared with the end user requirements. Uh, it's usually performed by the customer. Okay, uh, the system testing is, is, uh, is kind of a verification. So we discussed a verification last week to verify whether uh, the system comply, uh, conforms to the requirements of uh, the, uh, conform to a specified requirements. Acceptance testing is to test whether uh, the system uh, meets users' expectation, users' needs. Okay, that's validation. Okay, I that's it. I let's have have a uh, sorry. First, let's uh, uh, answer questions. If you have, uh, do we have uh, questions? And uh, no, I don't see any questions. Okay, let's have a break for. Uh, five minutes and then we'll come back okay so we'll have a total all right everyone can ask question in slack or here and let me know yeah let's have a break for five minutes okay so we'll come back uh we will come back at uh uh one one thirty okay come back at one thirty okay <laughs> 